there's a set of keys on the keyboard that I can't function without when I'm using Excel. And of course, I'm talking about the function keys up here. Can you guess which one of these is my favorite? Well, in this video, I'm gonna share over 20 function key shortcuts that will save you time, make Excel easier to use, and unlock hidden features. So let's get to it. All right, so we're gonna start with F1 and work our way across the keyboard. Pressing Control F1 hides the ribbon, which cleans up some clutter and allows you to view more rows. You can press Control F1 to bring it back. Control Shift F1 will put Excel in full screen mode, which hides the ribbon and the title bar along with the quick access toolbar. And again, Control Shift F1 to bring it back. If you have some data you wanna visualize, you can press Alt F1 to instantly create a chart. If the data is in a pivot table, then the shortcut creates a pivot chart. And if you're working in a formula, you can put your cursor inside the function and press F1, and that'll bring up the help menu for that function. Now, some Excel users hate the F1 key, and they'll go as far as removing it from their keyboard because it gets in the way of pressing F2. And pressing F2 will edit the cell, allows you to view the formula in the cell. You can, of course, make changes and then hit Enter or press Escape to get out of it. And F2 is probably one of the most popular function keys in Excel. And you can also press Control F2 to set focus up here in the formula bar and edit the cell here. And one other little pro tip, you can also use F2 in File Explorer to quickly edit and rename files. If you're using a laptop or smaller keyboard, you might need to press the FN or function key in combination with the function keys. Many manufacturers also have a function lock option, and you can do a quick Google search to figure out how to lock the function keys for your specific keyboard. Next up is F3, and pressing Control F3 opens the Name Manager. The Name Manager is great if you're working with named ranges or lambdas, or even if you forgot to rename some of your Excel tables. You can select an item here, and you can even just double click to edit the item and rename it. The F4 key has a few handy uses in Excel. When writing formulas, here I'm going to select this cell and I'm gonna press F4 on the keyboard to make this an absolute reference by adding the dollar symbols. And of course you can press F4 multiple times to cycle through the mixed relative and absolute references. And that way when we copy this formula down, the reference will remain locked to cell G2. Another use for F4 is let's say I select this cell and then I fill it with this yellow fill color. If I want to go down to this cell and also fill it with that yellow fill color, I can hit F4 on the keyboard to repeat my last action, and I can continue to do that for any selection that I have. Pressing F5 opens the Go To menu. You can also use Control G. This allows you to go to any named ranges or tables in your workbook by just double clicking any of these items. You can also hit Special here, and this will allow you to select different types of cells. If you want to select all the cells that contain formulas, just double click this, and that will select all of our formula cells. If you're working with pivot tables or Power Query, you can press Alt F5 to refresh the pivot table or query that you have selected. You can also press Control alt f5 to refresh all the pivot tables and queries in the workbook. If you forget that one, you can go up to the Data tab and hover over Refresh All. You'll see the keyboard shortcut there and the screen tip. Now, if you want to learn even more shortcuts, we have a free shortcuts guide that contains over 270 shortcuts for the Windows, Mac, and Web versions of Excel. I'll put a link in the description where you can download the free PDF. F6 is probably one of my least used function keys, but I'll still mention some of its features. So pressing F6 once on the keyboard will set focus down here to the tabs at the bottom. You can then use the arrow keys to move over to tabs and hit enter to select one. If you press F6 twice, it'll set focus to the name box up here. And then you can continue to press F6 to just select or set focus to different areas of the application. Using Control F6 will select the next Excel workbook that you have open. So this is a good way to toggle between workbooks. Of course, you can also use Control Tab to toggle between workbooks as well. And I prefer that since I frequently use Alt Tab to toggle between applications. 
Now, one shortcut I often forget to use is F7, and this is the shortcut for spell check. So we'll just bring up this spell check window and go through all of the misspelled words you have on the sheet. And here it'll show the misspelled word and then add some suggestions down here. And of course, you can just double click on these to make the change. And one nice part about this is it actually works in shapes as well. So that misspelled word was up here in this text box at the top of the sheet, and the spell check still detects that. And if you ever need a thesaurus, you can select the text within a cell and hit Shift F7, and that will give you some alternate words. If you've ever had this happen where you select a single cell and a range is selected instead, and you're not holding the Shift key, this is because you've accidentally pressed F8. It happens all the time. When you do that, down here in the status bar, you'll see it says Extend Selection. They can press F8 again or the Escape key to turn this off and then just select a single cell. I don't use F8 that often because I'd prefer to use the Shift and Arrow keys or hold Shift when selecting with the mouse to make that same selection. But one shortcut I do use with F8 is Alt F8. So Alt F8 will open the macro window. This is where you can access all of your macros in both your personal macro workbook or any workbooks you have open. And then you can run them from here or you can step into and edit them. If you're working with very large or complex workbooks that are slow to calculate, then you might be going up to the formulas tab and turning Excel into manual calculation mode. When you do this, and let's say you copy a formula down, you can see that that formula has not calculated yet. In order to manually calculate it, you can press F9 on the keyboard. That will calculate the entire workbook. If you only want to recalculate this sheet, then you can use Shift F9. Another use for F9 is when editing formulas. If I want to see the result of this left function right here, I can select all of that text and then press F9. That's going to return the result as this hard-coded value. Now, it's important that if you don't want to keep this hard-coded value in your formula, right now you hit the Escape key on the keyboard. It's also important to note that in modern versions of Excel, if you're using Microsoft 365, you can now select a component of a formula and Excel will calculate it and then show the result in the screen tip right above the formula here. So that's a really nice feature and that means you don't have to use F9 unless you're on an older version of Excel. If you're working with a sheet that contains a lot of shapes, charts, or slicers, you can press Alt F10 to open the selection pane. And this selection pane contains a list of all of the shapes on the sheet. It's especially nice if you're working with groups, if you've grouped objects together, you can select any of the shapes within that group to easily see and edit those. You can also click in here to uh, rename the group, which is really nice, makes it easier than clicking through a bunch of grouped names like this. And you can also click this icon to toggle the visibility of the group or the shape on the sheet. Now, one of my most commonly used function keys besides F2 is Alt F11. This opens the VB editor where we can write VBA macros to automate processes in Excel and other Office applications. It's really a whole new world within Excel that can help you save a ton of time with your job. And I'll put links in the description where you can learn more about getting started with VBA. And I should also quickly note that if you forget to press Alt when pressing F11, you'll get this new chart sheet added based on the data that you had selected. Sometimes this is useful, but most of the time it's not, and you can quickly just right-click, delete to delete the sheet. And the shortcut to insert a new sheet is Shift F11. And finally, we have F12. This is one I use pretty frequently. F12 opens the Save As window, where of course we can browse for the file location, change the file name, and save the file. And this shortcut also works in other Office applications like Word and PowerPoint. And if you're working with Power Query, Alt F12 opens the Power Query Editor window, another very handy shortcut to quickly get into the Query Editor to edit your queries. So I'm curious to know which of these shortcuts is your favorite, or if there are any that I missed. Leave a comment below and let us know. And don't forget to grab our free shortcuts guide. There'll be a link to this in the description. And if you want to save even more time with Excel, then check out this video next. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.